Let the fun begin. Okay, this is machine number 10 in the Commodore 64 repair saga. We're going to skip right over machine number 9 because that one looks like it's too far gone and is going to be a parts machine. This machine here, as you just saw in the opener, had some crazy colors on the screen. That points to two things, and I, one of them is our old favorite, the PLA. These chips are known to go bad all the time without warning just because you look at them funny. And the other choice is the color RAM. So it could be either one of these two chips here, and neither of them are in sockets. So the first thing I got to do is I got to grab some sockets for replacement chips, then I got to pull this out, then I got to pull this out. On machine number nine, I have a known good PLA because I tested it in my 60 clone, and so I will pull it out of that and put it into this socket. That's going to be the easy first thing to do. And if that doesn't work, then we'll have to go a little bit deeper. Let's get started. Turn on the noise maker. While that's warming up, I'm going to add some fresh solder into the mix here. It's always a good idea when you're doing this. Not only is it a good idea, it gives you something to do while you're waiting for the desoldering iron to warm up. This is the ANST ZD915. There'll be a link in the description down below for this. This tool is invaluable, if not a pain in the butt on its own when you're doing desoldering work. I always want to clean it out, and I clean it out before and after every use. And also, halfway through, just for good measure. Let's see how well that did. Weeha Chip Lifter is fantastic for this. This came in from Dr. Dave's Diversion, fantastic YouTube channel as well. She ain't quite clear yet, so we get back after it. All right, no pain on that. And sometimes that's the way it goes. You just take your time and then they pop free like that and all the holes look good. So we're ready to put our fresh socket back in. Notches in the socket line up with notches on the silk screen to tell you which way to put the chip in when you're ready to do that. And of course this socket has a bent pin. Let's do up the corners, make sure that it's laying flat, and then we can put all the rest of them in. Let's get after it. All right, now let's get the donor board with its long list of problems and we will get the known good PLA off of it. So notch on the chip lines up with the notch on the socket, lines up with the notch on the silk screen, and we are good to go. Some of these machines, the PLA and the SID is reversed. This is the 6581 sound chip. This is the PLA on this one. I'm gonna go check it out, see if it works. Okay, we are all set up on our test bench with our newly replaced PLA. Well, let's get up here onto the screen and what do we got? Oh, that's awesome. All right, let me plug a keyboard into it and type in some code, see what happens. Woo! All right, it does the thing. Let's run the dead test cartridge. I'm actually starting to suspect that that dead test cartridge is going bad. This is dead test cartridge number two. That looks a lot better. I didn't notice this before, but the timer clock down here at the bottom stops when it's doing its RAM test. No sound. Why do I have no sound? Is that because the volume's turned all the way down? Hey, the volume was turned off. Excellent. The PLA chip is marked as bad with a big X on it. It goes into the bad parts bin. Bad, bad parts. Next up, we need to get this thing out of this case because I want this case for something else. So we'll disconnect the power lead. We'll disconnect the keyboard lead. 
We'll put that out of the way, and then we will take this out of the case. Put the case out of the way. Put the motherboard out of the way, so we can bring over the 60 clone. Remember this beautiful work of art? I sure do. Spent a lot of time working on this. This is actually the reason why I'm not worried about repairing number nine. Number six in the repair series was way beyond repair. There were missing parts of the circuit board. The solder mask was coming off, etc., etc. I took a long time repairing that board, removed everything off of it, and then started over from scratch when the 60 clone came out. It was actually very fortuitous that they all came out at the same time. 60 clone out. We will put number 10 in its place. Put the keyboard on. And this machine is ready to find itself a happy home. All right, the 60 clone board is not only my personal Commodore 64 that I keep around forever, but it is also my test machine. So I just kind of loosely put it in the case. Okay. There we go, that's, that's pretty sexy looking. I like that. So now you whip this thing out, nice bright red case, guaranteed to offend some and impress others. And then you open it up and inside is a beautiful red motherboard. That is just gorgeous, both of them. So are you on Team Red or Team Don't You Ever Paint My Commodore Case Ever Again? Leave a comment in the description down below. Otherwise, there's a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.